What's going on everybody here today with another Bodhi Chain Mental Health video. On this channel, I talk about my own journey through severe mental illness, mainly obsessive compulsive disorder and severe anxiety. The title of today's video is Post Finasteride Syndrome, Is It Really All In My Head? This is a follow-up video to a video that I did a few days ago, where basically I talked about how, you know, I, what I realized is that what, you know, what started off as Post Finasteride Syndrome developed into obsessive compulsive disorder and severe anxiety. And I wanted to do a follow-up video because I've already got a few comments, um, people viewed the video, and I wanted to do a follow-up video on that um, and just clarify a few things and just go into detail about a few things. First and foremost, I wanna say that if you are experiencing PFS or what you believe to be PFS, I'm in no way trying to be dismissive or downplay any of any of what you're going through. Obviously, your life is probably you know, not, not you know, th this disorder of PFS um, has affected your life, you know, deeply in, 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 in every way. And um, I'm not trying to downplay that whatsoever. And I have shared, you know, a lot of your symptoms, you know, because I also too believe that I had PFS. All I'm trying to say is that in this video and in my previous video is that what you call post finasteride syndrome is actually health OCD. You're obsessed with your health, specifically around you know, this post finasteride syndrome. And what's really difficult when you have an anxiety disorder, and this is common among all people that have OCD and all people that have severe anxiety, is that it's very difficult to believe that the symptoms that you're experiencing are caused by anxiety and they're not caused by whatever you're obsessing over, specifically in, 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 in health OCD. It's important for me to point out that health OCD is a very common theme. And just for a textbook definition, obsessive compulsive disorder, chronic anxiety can basically be defined into people that have chronic um, negative intrusive thoughts um, that come into their mind and they do compulsive behaviors in order to check, control, and deal with these thoughts. Basically check, control, and cope with these thoughts in their mind. And um, all, all types of OCD basically go this way. Um, and it's probably difficult for you at this point to even realize what I'm talking about because if you've had this quote unquote post finasteride syndrome for any period of time, you know, you've probably not been in the present moment since that time where even maybe before you maybe even had anxiety disorder before you even started taking the medication you were unaware of. But, um, you know, you're, you're, you're so lost in these thoughts that you're not even, you, you, you really don't even, you, you can't tell the difference between yourself and your thoughts. And that's the crux of, that is basically, although there's a lot of people out here who also are fused with their thoughts and they can't tell the difference between themselves and their thoughts, not all of these people are meet the criteria for a mental health condition. However, um, a primary, uh, what I would consider is a, a, a primary prerequisite to any mel a mental health condition is this fact that you can't tell the difference between yourself and your thoughts. And you're telling yourself a story every day and you're having these same thoughts every day and you're doing all these, you know, you're just narrating in your head all day. And this is OCD, this is anxiety, this is depression, this is the mental health problem. And it's hard to realize because this all feels so real. Everything feels so real that you can no longer see the present moment for what it is. And, you know, like within OCD, within the community of people that have pure O, you know, and you can Google that, that term, or health OCD, you know, this is one of the most common OCD themes there are out here. And in fact, I developed, after I had PFS, I also developed some other, some other themes related to health OCD. And I think health OCD is probably one of the most common themes that get people dug down into chronic uh, anxiety disorder because typically there is a salt of truth. I mean, there's a salt of truth uh, in, in the fact that you have PFS. I mean, you know, uh, you know, the drug itself says that there are side effects, you know, on it. So, and then you, there's all these other people that are experiencing these side effects. So it's not like this is a completely absurd, you know, it's not completely absurd. There's definitely, you know, a salt of truth around, you know, this drug affecting your body. 
Um, the problem is, is that, 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 that truth that, Hey, you know, if you take this drug, you may experience side effects. Um, that kind of grain of truth has taken on this other, completely other narrative, you know, at some point in this situation, he completely freaked out. And, you know, so this, 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 the salt of truth around your health, um, has been blown up now into just like this full blown disorder. And you've kind of like, this is like a community, in my opinion, the post finasteride syndrome community is all just a community of people who all dig each other down into the same ditch of, you know, I have post finasteride syndrome and you all share many of the same, you all kind of validate and you all kind of validate and, um, you know, further the narrative in your own minds that this is all so real. And like I said, because there is some truth to what you're going through, this is like the, this is like the gasoline on the, on, on the, on the OCD. It's like, you know, well, all these other people are experiencing it and this drug has been known to show some side effects. So I have to have it because it, you know, it's so hard to believe that all of this is happening and it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not truly like this because there is some truth to what you're saying. And a lot of people with health OCD develop this, you know, some people like, for instance, maybe, you know, they have a history of like heart attacks or psychiatric disorders, you know, like schizophrenia or, you know, they have all these different things or maybe one of their, you know, one of their friends develops. Um, I'll give you another instance of health OCD that I had, you know, I had somebody that I knew close to me that, you know, got an STD. <laughs> I started believing that I had an STD and I ended up having to get checked for STD and I was obsessing over this. This just goes show like, you know, geez, these STDs are very common. I haven't been tested and all these partners. This just seems like a really genuine concern. And so worrying about this and obsessing about this seems somewhat rational because it's not completely, you know, debased in reality. There's, you know, maybe I do have an STD, you know, STD symptoms don't show up you know, for a lot of people. And, and, and so you can worry about so many things. And like with the STD thing, a lot of people like, you know, they believe that they have AIDS. And so there's so many different things that people obsess over, especially in the health OCD, you know, the health OCD, um, the, 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 the health OCD theme or obsession that so many people that have this obsession actually have some grain of truth at the core of their fear. Um, because of that, it's very difficult when you're experiencing all of these symptoms and it all feels so real that this is actually just all in your head and you're just, you know, you just freaked out and you've just developed an anxiety disorder or you had an anxiety disorder before. Well, I say blah. One thing to say about OCD is that OCD is a very convincing disorder. That's why people with OCD suffer so greatly, such as what I believe is yourself. Because people with OCD, I mean, you know, outside of health OCD, you have people that are completely convinced of being pedophiles, um, completely convinced of, you know, being, you know, maybe, they, maybe they're straight, but they believe they could be gay. They believe they could have incestuous relationships with their families. They believe that they could kill somebody. They believe they could kill themselves. They believe that... Um, you know, that they did things that they didn't, they believe that they had, um, memories that they didn't, they believe, um, you know, all, you know, they obsess whether they would cheat on their partners, they obsess over anything, you can really obsess over any uncertainty that, that, that out there, and so there's those people convinced as you that they're pedophiles, you know, there's no real evidence to support that. Um, but they believe that there's a strong possibility that they could be a pedophile, a child molester, a murderer, commit suicide, all of these things. Um, this seems bizarre. It seems crazy to someone from the outside looking in. And you might even be able to see that in other people would say, I don't know why somebody would believe they're a pedophile. This person's never shown anything. This person's deathly afraid of being around children. This is the power of the mind. The mind is that powerful. It can convince you of pretty much everything anything and everything and um and it does do this in ocd and you know this is the situation that you probably have that you probably you know you believe that you have post finasteride syndrome and it's extremely convincing therefore it's very difficult but this is this is anxiety this is uh, anxiety disorders are very severe and that's really how i want to end this video and I can go into maybe more and more detail in some other videos, you know, if people want me to. But 
you know, I wish I could sit here and say, guess what? You don't have post finasteride syndrome. You have OCD, chronic anxiety. And I wish I could tell you that that is uh, an easier thing to have. It's just anxiety. Because when people talk about anxiety out here, it's a word that's thrown around so loosely and it's so misunderstood itself. Now, when people think about anxiety, they don't think about what you're experiencing. They think about being nervous or maybe having panic attacks, which some of you may also be having. You know, they're thinking about these type of things. They can't imagine, like, what is anxiety? Anxiety disorders at the root is an uncontrollable um, worry. It's just where you're worried. And then as this develops, you know, you develop... Uh, you know, depression as well because of the chronic stress and the, you know, the trauma to your mind. And so you develop all of these, you know, it's just this obsession where you're just worrying and reflecting and ruminating nonstop about these negative things. And you just get dug down into this pit of anxiety and depression and trauma and everything else, you know, and, um, yeah. So I wish I could tell you <laughs> that it's not a big deal what you're, what you're going through. OCD and anxiety are also considered chronic mental health problems. You can Google generalized anxiety disorder. You can Google obsessive compulsive disorder. You can Google all of these. And what you're going to find is that these are also considered chronic conditions and they're very, very hard to treat. That being said, there is hope um, with there is treatment and there is hope and there is you know um, there is a path to improve your mental health uh, and even perhaps reach full recovery which I talk about on this channel but I'm not going to dive into right now you know the biggest thing I can say for anybody that's suffering from this post finasteride syndrome and you don't believe me is that you know, reflect on two things. First off, reflect on what I'm talking about the present moment. When was the last time you were truly in the present moment? When was the last time that you just took a walk and you were just there taking a walk with an empty mind? There with the trees or there with whatever's around you in the present moment. When was the last time? You probably can't remember. And that right there is proof <clears throat> that right there is proof that you're caught deeply 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 in your own head you're living in your head and so you're not living in the greater reality you're living in your head and so if you're living in your head how can you possibly see life for how it truly is if you're stuck in your own mind and own little world in your head how is that possible? How could you possibly see life for what it really is if you're not really in the life that you have in this moment? So, understand that, okay? Second thing is, reflect on the point that what I'm saying. Obviously, if you are deeply anxious, deeply depressed, brain fog, you have all these psychological issues, why would your body Okay, your brain, right, is the command center of your body. Okay, it controls every aspect of your body, right? You're right, you become anxious, your heart rate goes up. You become stressed, your cortisol levels go up. Okay, everything, your brain commands everything in your body. So why would you not expect to have fatigue, brain fog, low libido, um, you know, bad skin, bad tears, if your nervous system quite literally is completely shattered, you know, if your nervous system is wrecked, why would in your nervous system expands out to all of your, you know, fingertips and all the way all through your body, if your nervous system is a wreck, why would you expect for you to ha not have all of these physical symptoms? Your brain is a is a physical part of your body and it and it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it stretches into the rest of your body so why would you why would you why would you not have all of these symptoms if you had these type of psychological issues and once again to repeat 
you know, if you literally just had low libido because of taking this, you know, drug, right? If you just had low libido because of taking this drug, I so you took the drug, you experienced side effects, you got off, you developed post mastitis syndrome, and you're like, yeah, you know, you know, it is what it is. You wouldn't have any of these symptoms because you would be in a calm, relaxed state. Your body would heal. So nobody's saying that nobody's completely fine like happy and like having like a good normal life and they're just on viagra and, and, and testosterone you know because of what's happened no nobody I, i've never heard anybody like yeah you know it's really you know it was unfortunate what happened to me you know it sucks you know it's what happened to me i developed these side effects and you know i can no longer it's more difficult for me to have an erection and blah blah, blah. no everybody that's suffering this has all of these deep psychological issues okay all I'm saying is, it's the psychological issues that's causing the physical issues. Your brain is part of your body. So, if your brain's fucked up, your body's fucked up. Everybody should know that obviously long-term stress is very unhealthy. You know what I mean? And like with the memory issues, one of the big things is, I saw someone on like, I was watching, it's kind of inspiration for this um, video, you know, I was watching a PFS network and someone said they, you know, they, 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 um, you know, they so somebody committed suicide with PFS, and then they did an autopsy on the brain, and their hippocampus was shrunk. And they, you know, they said that was due to PF, PFS. Just Google hippocampal hippocampus shrinkage due to anxiety and stress. The hippocampus shrinks when you're under when you have severe anxiety, and the hippocampus is re, re, you know it's it is um, there for memory. You know what I mean? That it, it serves as memory. So if you don't have good memory, you have a damaged hippocampus and, and, and stress and anxiety is known to, to, shape, to, 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 to produce that. So, you know, you have a brain and it's, it's just really twisted up. So all of these symptoms, psychologically and physically, can all be explained through anxiety and OCD. The gum rescission and, and even all other chronic illnesses. I mean, once again, if you are stressed out you're all the time you're obviously going to be much more predisposed to just illness and disorders and all types of chronic other other health problems obviously you're not gonna have good good health your body's gonna be deteriorating you know um, because of the stress so everything that any everything that everything there's nothing like I said if someone said oh yeah I'm good I just have a problem with keeping an erection now, or my ejaculation just never turned back to the way that it used to be, but I'm fine otherwise, and I'm just taking these drugs to cope with that, you know, to help that, that would be, that would make sense. But what doesn't make sense is that everybody has all these deep psychological issues on top of these physical issues. It's the mind, it's affecting the body. It's not the body affecting the mind. And so, anyways, I hope that this, this video really helps you um, at least question where you're at with your post finasteride syndrome and so that maybe you can start to move forward into a at least get your your, your diagnosis right properly as long as you have post finasteride syndrome believe you have post finasteride syndrome you will always have post finasteride syndrome there is no cure I mean, there's no, there's, for a lot of people, there's no cure for OCD or anxiety, but I'll tell you, there's not even any hope as long as you, as long as you're completely convinced that there's no possible way that this is in your head, you will, oh, this will always be in your head. You will never, you will never be able to at least take the next step, which is at least working on, you know, treating your anxiety and mental health problems as long as you believe that you have PFS, all right, you will have PFS and you'll have PFS symptoms. Hope this video finds you all well. Please like, share, comment below. Peace.